Hello. No, come on over, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Well, it's good to see you. Yes, but you, you remember me, I'm Richard Pellens. That's right, working for the armory, busy about preparing for the King's Triumph. Yes, we're all here, Dicker and Rafe and Hans, we're all, not Hans, actually I haven't seen Hans for a bit, but we're all here. Yes, it's been what, a week since we met in, where was it? Bru Bruges, that's right, yes. Well, how, how fair is it? You go well, good, I'm glad to hear it. Yes, we're well enough. We've been very busy though, since we parted company, we've been all over the place. We've been to uh, Ghent, we've, uh, and incidentally, thank you very much for the tip about the horses. That was very, that was very uh, helpful. We've been to Ghent, we've been to uh, Mackerlin, Termont here, now Brussels. Uh, and the, Brussels is a very fair town. It, it is the, indeed, the, uh, your uh, town hall makes our guild hall back in London look like a cattle shed. Very impressive. And what's the building there and building opposite? Is that, it looks fit for a king. Not that you have kings, do you? Oh yeah, we have a king. Yep, and it's the king's business that's keeping us so busy. Well, this last uh, w week, we've been mostly uh, purchasing parts for lances. Yeah, pa parts for lances. Oh, well, no, you see, that's a common misunderstanding. A lance is very much more than just a big stick. I mean, maybe once lances were just big sticks back in, I don't know, the days of Brutus the Trojan when he rid the Isle of Albion of uh, Gog and Magog. Maybe he did it with a big stick, but if he were to turn up at a joust of peace today with such a thing, he would be laughed out of court for having an implement so unsophisticated. So it's rather more complicated than a big stick. Well, to start with, you need yourself uh, a spear, sh well, I suppose you need a big stick, in fact, to, to start with, but it's gotta be a really big stick. It's gotta be about eight foot long, and straight and true and strong. Uh, so generally speaking, we use pine or fir because they grow that way, but they don't grow necessarily thick as your thigh at one end and thin as your wrist at the other over that length, so you're gonna have to shape it. Uh, and you're gonna have to shape it so that there's a grip for the knight's hand at the one end. And then, you, of course, you're going to have to uh, take that p possibly further. Uh, some uh, will, will carve out grooves the length of the lance in order to flute it to reduce the weight without reducing the rigidity. Some even halve the lance and hollow it out and glue it back together again, although whether we'll have time for that seems very unlikely. I've left that in the hands of William Hayward, the king's master joiner. He can decide whether to go to those uh, lengths. We've been buying the parts that go on it. So we've been buying uh, morns. A morn is a sort of steel rebated cap that goes on the on the business end of the lance. Because if you had a spear blade there in a joust of peace, you could end up accidentally skewering uh, your friendly opponent. And of course, that sort of thing will be frowned on. So you have a rebated blunt steel tip called a morn. And then at the, the holding end, you've got your van plate, which is a steel plate shaped a bit like the mouth of a trumpet. And that sits in front of where the knight's holding the lance to protect his hand from the lance of whoever he's, he's tilting against. And then behind uh, where the knight's holding it, behind the grip, you've got yourself a burr, which is an iron ring, and that will butt up against the lance rest that's on the knight's uh, cuirass. Uh, to, to stop the whole thing shooting back as soon as he hits uh, his target, assuming he hits his target. So that's what you need for just one lance. And that's just one lance. And you need more than one lance for your knight because your knight's gonna be breaking lances. That's, that's the plan. You get, you get better scores if you break your lance. So you've got to hope that your knight returns from the lists with a shattered lance. Otherwise it might well be a grumpy knight. So, when he comes back with his lance, you've got, to, you've got to replace it quickly. You can't be fooling around with van plates and burrs. And in any case, your morn has probably sailed off somewhere into the crowd. So you can't get that back. So you need to have a whole new complete lance to thrust into his outstretched gauntlet in order for him to enter into the lists and tilt again. So you'll need at least as many uh, lances as the knight is going to do passes. And then you start doing the numbers, don't you? Because uh, each of our knights is going to be doing either probably six or maybe as many as eight passes. They're discussing the terms even as we speak. And we've got two or 300 knights, haven't we? From, from England and from France and from the Low Countries. So we have erred on the side of caution and William Hayward, the King's Master Joiner, is preparing one and a half thousand spear shafts. And we've spent the week buying 2,000 morns, 2,000 burrs, 1,000 van plates. And the van plates, 
They're good, they're Innsbruck steel, but they still need work. So we'll get them ground and glazed and garnished and lined and I'll ship them to uh, London so they can be fitted to the spear shafts and then everything will be brought back over to be finished off with the mourns and the burrs and they'll be painted and decorated and beribboned as is, as is the way. And that's, that's, the, that's just the lance. And that's absolutely typical for anything in a tournament. You look at it and think that's simple. You think that's just a big stick, but it's not. It's more complicated than that. Don't, e don't even get me started on the subject of swords. Although we will be starting on swords next. That's what we need, gotta, that's what we need a lot of swords. Well, no, we are, we are I think it's fair to say, weary uh, and, and a little foot sore. Poor race on his uppers. And I don't mean that as a figure of speech. He's literally worn out his shoes. We had to buy him a new pair of shoes for 12 pence to keep going. But keep going, we will. That's right. Well, thank you very much. And I, well, maybe our paths will cross again. And if they do, we'll let you know. These are very nice, by the way. What are these? Corf Warfers? Whatever they are, they're very palatable. Cheers.